Now we're going to talk to Steve Busby, former MLB pitcher and Rangers broadcaster. Steve, thanks for joining us this morning on CBS Sports Radio. How you doing? I'm great, Jiggy. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. How excited is, is the fan base, is the organization down in Texas right now as you look at this division-leading Texas Rangers, really the best record in the American League right now, Texas Rangers, and you just add to what you already had. Yeah, I, I think people were really uh, looking forward to the trade deadline. They, they felt like they needed a shot in the arm, and certainly John Daniels uh, and his front office group gave the Rangers a shot in the arm, and maybe it wasn't the kind of shot that folks were, were looking at. They were expecting Chris Sale or, or Chris Archer or, or a starting pitcher of, of note. Uh, what they did is they upgraded the uh, the offense, uh, and, and certainly Ryan, I should say, uh, uh, LaCroix, LaCroix um, Jonathan LaCroix is going to be a help to the pitching staff in how he uh, manipulates the pitching staff, and uh, that and uh, Jeremy Jeffers and Carlos Beltran, uh, you know, three guys that are going to make a tremendous difference uh, in the ball club. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the guys who I guess he was having an okay year, and you you saw this, was Prince Fielder. who I mean, he obviously goes out with a, a neck injury for the season. It looks like he's going to have surgery, and we don't know how long-term that is or what effect it will have on his career. The, the short-term solution is Carlos Beltran. He's 39 years old, he's, but he's been fantastic uh, in the postseason. When you, when you make that kind of you know, necessary switch or necessary acquisition, is that something that gives players, I guess, an uplift, right? Because you know that your, 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 your organization, your GM, he, he wants to put you in the best position. He's going to do whatever it takes. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Jake. And I, I think that does give the guys in the clubhouse a lift and saying that, hey, the front office believes in us. You know, they're, they're giving us some help here. Uh, it's up to us now to go out and, and get the job done on the field. And uh, I, I think that's the way the Rangers feel. The Rangers had that kind of feeling last year when the club uh, acquired Cole Hamels at the trading deadline. And I told Cole when he got to, got to, to uh, Texas that, hey, the impact that he has had on the club took place before he ever threw a pitch for the Rangers, you know, in that the guys in the, in the clubhouse said, hey, you know, we've got a legitimate shot now. We've got an ace, and, and uh, now let's go out and, and uh, put it together on the field. I think they feel the same way about Beltran and, uh, and LaCroix and Jeffers, too. You were talking to Steve Busby here, Rangers broadcaster on CBS Sports uh, Radio here. Steve, um, uh, going back to Prince Fielder, where, where do we think his career is headed? We know he's had those problems that kind of pushed him out of Detroit. He came to uh, Texas, and it felt like he was maybe coming back, right? He was resurrecting it in a way. Uh, but where do we feel? What do we feel about Prince Fielder right now? You know, that's going to that's gonna be a, a question that's answered sometime this offseason. A uh, lot of concern about Prince. Anytime you have two neck surgeries, I, you know, I don't care what sport you're playing, uh, if your neck's bad, you're going to be – you're going to be uh, hurting, and uh, and Prince was doing that. The question that nobody is able to answer was, when did this start bothering Prince, and did the first surgery ever clear it up completely? Um, same kind of surgery two times, and and the uh, the discs were a couple a couple apart. Same area of the neck though, and and uh, you know Fielder, uh, not the kind of guy that's going to say, hey, I can't go. He's going to go out there if he can if he can walk, and uh, it just it's hard to say. Okay, his his neck was good here. He, he had good feelings. This is this is the kind of hitter he's going to be. I don't know if you can say that. The last three years, Prince might have been hurting the whole time. Just never never let anybody find out. Yeah, no, it's one of those situations where you're an athlete, you're a competitor. You probably don't want to admit when something is is wrong, and as a result, you end up probably doing more damage. You talk about you know winning with offense, and that's kind of what it feels like the Rangers are going to do. But can you do that in Major League Baseball right now? And then ultimately win a championship you brought up Cole Hamels he's had a fantastic season uh this year 12 and 2 and 2 4 2 uh, ERA Martin Perez is also the guy who's had a ton of innings Colby Lewis is playing as playing good baseball what is what what can you can the Rangers get it done if their pitching doesn't hold up well let, let me answer that in two parts Dickie. I, I think you can win it with offense through the regular season I don't think you can in the playoffs uh, Rangers are going to have to solve the, the pitching problem uh, before they get to the playoffs or if they get to the playoffs. Uh, that's where you have to shut other teams down. And you may play a lot of one nothing 2-1 games. And you've got to be able to uh, shut other teams down. You've also got to be able to play fundamental uh, baseball and not make critical mistakes. In a, in a close ball game, critical mistakes are the, are the difference makers. And the Rangers have to shore those two areas up. Uh, the starting rotation... Uh, and their defense too, which has kind of fallen on hard times. Yeah, no, that, that's that's not a good sign for 
uh, the postseason run that we hope that the Rangers take. Steve Busby here, Rangers broadcaster. You Darvish, obviously strikeout king when he was healthy, battled a lot over the last couple of years. He's back now. Um, he's lost all his last you know few outings. But we're, how how do we feel about you Darvish, and is he going to be a, a the the force that you need him to be when he gets to the postseason? Dickie, I think he can be. I, I don't know if he's going to get it all the way back uh, by the time the postseason this year gets there. Hard to tell with the, uh, you know, coming back from Tommy John, exactly how long it takes a guy to get back to 100%. We know that eventually, uh, sometime next year probably, he's definitely going to be 100%. Can he get there before October this year? I, I really don't know. He's been a little bit inconsistent. Last time out, he was very, very good. Uh, struck out 11 in six innings. Um, is that a sign that uh, he's over the hump now? I, we'll have to see. I, you know, he's throwing tonight, and uh, the Rangers are certainly hoping that he can uh, slide in next to Cole Hamels and be a one-two punch. Yeah, no, that would that that would sound actually ideal if you're a Rangers fan. If you are a Rangers fan, who are you looking at? Are you worried about the Houston Astros coming behind you? Uh, there's been five and a half games behind the, the Rangers right now. But when I look at the you – know, these are advanced stats. It kind of don't matter, but they do matter. You look at the run differential, it's only plus nine uh, for the Texas Rangers, whereas Houston's been a little bit better. Are you worried about the Astros doing what the Astros seemingly are set to do after the bad start that they had? Dickie, I, you know, I think you always worry about a young club because if they get a head of steam up, they are almost unstoppable. And certainly what the Astros went through last year, learning what it was like to, to lose out in the end, gave them a pretty good idea of where they wanted to go and how to get there. Uh, having said that, I think the Rangers are more concerned about getting their own game together. Uh, they're going to let whatever happens, happens. But they want to get the infield uh, defense shorn up. Uh, they want to get the starting pitching shored up. Uh, they want to play a more consistent, solid game of baseball. And I think uh, the Rangers feel if they do those things, uh, the rest will take care of itself and they'll get into October. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Uh, that's that's the way to go about it. You just have to do the little things uh, in the moment and then worry about the bigger picture as you, you, you go on. Steve Busby here, a Rangers broadcaster. It, one of the interesting points at the trade deadline that didn't happen is that the Rangers didn't have to part ways with Joey Gallo. Are you surprised? Yeah, I, I kind of am, especially getting uh, getting Luke Roy and, and, the, and the closer, Jeffress. I, I thought definitely in a deal like that they'd have to give up Gallo or uh, – uh, you know, maybe even Profar, uh, who is playing at the major league level and playing well right now. They didn't, and I think the Rangers uh, have to really feel fortunate. They, they have to feel like, hey, we've still got the, the deck pretty well stacked in our favor uh, as they look to maybe do something over the winter. But, yeah, I, I was surprised. Yeah, well, we, we hope that he turns into the player that everybody expects him to be. When you talk about prospects, he was the guy that everybody just salivates over and you get to hang on to him. You got the call tonight at the Orioles, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, good luck to the Rangers, and thanks for joining us this morning, Steve. Tiki, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it very much. Have a good one.